Hi guys, and welcome to the latest episode of the Flickering Dream podcast. Today we've got myself, Scott Forbes, and the Reverend Andy Godfrey, and we're going to talk to you today about the latest Netflix feature, The Beautiful Game. Here's a clip. I was a player. Vinny Walker, the- legend in the making. Vinny was a pro. He's been living in his car for months. He's lost. We're going to play an international football tournament in Rome. There'll be players coming from all over the world. This lot are England's best homeless players. Homeless. So, Andy, I know you're a big football fan like I am. What did you think of this one? I was really looking forward to this one. I have to say I enjoyed it, but I've got some caveats. So um, it's about the Homeless World Cup, which is a real event that happens once every four years. Uh, Teams of homeless people from all over the world come to wherever it happens to be stages. In this instance, it's in Rome to play four aside football and and see who can be the champions of the world. This follows the English team managed by Bill Nye. Um, We meet a guy called Vinny, who he spots playing uh, football in the park and decides he'd love to have his team. Vinny, it turns out, is an ex-pro who used to play for West Ham. Uh, and we get to the World Cup and there's the inevitable ups and downs and highs and lows. Uh, England win some games, England lose some games. I'm not going to tell you how it, how that pans out in terms of the final position that England finishes in the tournament, because that would be a spoiler. But my caveat is, is I've got two caveats. Really. One, I think it's too long for a film about football, the beautiful game, for a side football. It's two hours, five minutes. And I did find that there were times when it dragged just a little bit and I was sort of yelling at the screen, get on with it, let's move on to the next match, let's move on to the next scene. So I felt that they, whilst they were trying to make time for character development, I felt that that was a little bit elongated and a little bit unnecessary at times. And secondly, I love Bill Nye. I mean, I've met Bill Nye. I think Bill Nye is one of our greatest actors. I just think he's miscast in this. I don't really see him as a football manager. He never really convinced me that he had the passion that he had the drive, that he had the technical knowledge to manage a football team, albeit a four-side team in the Homeless World Cup. So I think if any, if it had been somebody else who had a bit more drive, Bill Nye plays his usual sort of deadpan character, that there's one moment where he does exude and he gets sent off, and that's, that. you know. Um, but I felt he was slightly miscast in this. He never really struck me as being the football manager type, you know. Um, other than that, and I did, as I say, I did think it was a bit too long at two hours, five minutes. There were times when it tried my patience a little bit. I wanted to move on to the next match rather than just see five minutes of a guy sitting in a bench in a park doing some internal agonizing about his situation. Um, so those were my two caveats. On the whole, though, I thought it was, I thought it's pretty good and worth seeing. And you know, the, the, you get the stuff at the end about the real. Homeless World Cup, and you get real shots of, of actual games. That's quite good. So, yeah, for anybody who likes football, I think they'll enjoy it. But I just thought it was too long, and I thought Bill Murray, Bill Nye, um was was a bit miscast. But those are my two caveats. Fair enough. Scott. Um, I think I might like this one a little bit more than you did. I <laughs> thought that... Well, I actually... Do agree with you about Bill Nye, but I still think he gave a good performance in oh, yeah, the role gives a, of what he did. He's always going to give a good performance. He's a good actor. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I, I think performances across the board were actually pretty good. Michael Ward, uh, as our protagonist, Vinny, unlikable character, to be honest, for the most part of this movie. Yeah. And there's part of me that that did put me off a little bit, and I think it might put some other people off, especially early on when he's the guy we're supposed to be rooting for. But it wasn't so much about the protagonists in this film that really got me. Some of the supporting cast and characters were the ones that really drew me in, particularly some of the other teams. So we've got some drama going on with the South Africa team who are trying to get there, and there's some issues about refugees and some questionable air support security that we see at play. Uh, And that side of things was great. And uh, Susan Wakoma playing this nun who's their manager. She was really funny. Yeah, you've got a nun managing the South African team. Exactly. I did think think she was probably the best thing about the film. She was very good. I really enjoyed her. Um, And then the Japanese team, oh, they got to me. 
So we've basically yeah, yeah, we've got yeah. this really enthusiastic young girl who's their manager, and they're basically just a bunch of old men that come there. They look all sad. They're very very bad at football, and they just want to sort of be tourists and just have fun looking around Rome while they take the chance. And we get to the point where all we're wanting them to do is score a goal, just do something, just to send them home with a little smile. Yeah, yeah, and. Yeah. As the film goes on, it does give a moment or two that did did shed a little tear. I'll be honest. Okay. There, I, it got to me, and I didn't expect that. And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> Japan, you you old men, good for you." Um, so yeah, it had that stuff going on, but it goes to the point that probably what you're saying about it being too long. There's a lot of subplots going on here. Yeah, you've got stuff South Africa, Japan. You've got. A couple, two different sort of romance stories that are yeah with the girl and the American team yeah yeah you've yeah, got the boy yeah, and yeah. the American girl and then you've got Bill Nye as well and the sort yeah. of organizer yeah and I think you probably could have cut both of them and yeah. it would have made the film a bit better yeah a bit sharp though I think yeah, yeah they, they didn't really add enough especially yeah. the Bill Nye one that yeah. really seemed yeah. out of place because then yeah. there's like a sub subplot about his wife. And it's just like, yeah, you're leaving a bit too much in this. Yeah. I would say, though, the football scenes were pretty good. Um, yeah. Sport, especially football, aren't – they don't always give the great scenes in terms of the actual playing of the sport itself. But this one, although it be it's, it's four aside, it's quite fun. On the whole, yeah, I thought this was an enjoyable film. In fact, it's on Netflix as well. It's a very easy one that you can tune in, tune out if you want to, and come back to it That's later. That's true. So, yeah, I was, I I enjoyed this one a lot. Good. What kind of score would you give this one, Andy? I, I give it a seven. Seven. So I give this. So hit there. Yeah. 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 Um. Well, I'll keep it a hit because I give this one an eight. Oh, there you go. So that is a flickering dreams score of seven point five, which does make the beautiful game a hit. That's okay. Thank you for joining us today, guys. If you enjoyed listening to us, please do like, subscribe, share, do everything that you normally do to spread the word to people about us. We need those coins. Come on. We need those views and listens. Please tell everyone. Bye. Thank you so much for listening or watching Flickering Dreams. You can find the video version on YouTube and the audio version on all major podcast platforms. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get each of the weekly episodes as they are released. We'll see you at the movies.